We're going to use a confidence interval to test this claim. So the question says at age 9, the average weight and the average height for both boys and girls are exactly the same. This would be our claim. So as we kind of start to identify things, this is our claim. Um, a random sample of 9-year-olds yields the following results. Um, and then part number one says, estimate the mean difference in height for boys and girls with 99% confidence. So this is asking us to construct a 99% confidence interval. And we're going to use that to test this claim that the um, height and weight of boys and girls are the same. Um, they're giving us information here about the height. Okay, so a confidence interval of 99% of the height. Um, so as we take a look at what we're given here, we're given two different samples. Um, we do have a population variance, which we'll need to change into a standard deviation. So we'll need to change that into a standard deviation. Um, so for starters, that standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So when we're asked for the population standard deviation in our calculator, we're going to go ahead and put a square root symbol around both of those variance values. So now we've got the population standard deviation, we have sample sizes, and a mean height. These are our point estimates, so these are our x bars. Um, and n, so we've got everything that we need to construct a confidence interval. Before we do that though, let me grab my um, black pen and I want to go ahead and set up the hypotheses. I think it's really important to set up the hypotheses, so we'll just call this step number one in order to figure out how this fits into the confidence interval. So the hypotheses here, we're doing um, the heights only so we can forget about the weight, so we're looking for the heights. Um, the claim is that they are exactly the same. So the null hypothesis would be that mu sub the boys is equal to mu sub the girls. Um, in other words, we're saying that the difference between these two is equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis, um, since the claim is that they're exactly the same, the alternative hypothesis would be that they're not the same. So not equal to mu sub g, or that the difference is significantly different than zero. We've established that the null hypothesis is the claim. So we're testing for a difference that's zero. When we set up the confidence interval, the confidence interval is going to cover 99% of the area. So I'm going to just leave off a tiny little bit in these tails here. So this is going to be my 99% area. And this is going to be the confidence interval for my differences, for mu boy minus mu girl. And we're looking for an average difference of zero. So we're looking for that average difference to be zero. Um, if it is zero, I'm going to put a question mark here. If it is zero, that means that we are supporting the claim that says that the difference is zero. If it's significantly different than zero, then we are favoring the alternative hypothesis. Let's go ahead and put some numbers in this. So keep in mind though that we're testing a difference. When we get this confidence interval, we're going to have some numbers here, but these numbers are going to represent the differences between the mean height of the boys and the girls. And if we look at this right now, it looks like our difference, so that um, x bar, so that difference, I'm just going to put a little delta there for difference, would be 125 minus 127.6. That would be boys minus girls. So the difference that we're looking at is negative 2.6. Okay, so we're going to put this into the calculator. The calculator is going to find this confidence interval. The question really is, does zero live in the confidence interval or not? Uh, let me grab my calculator. We're going to go to the stat menu and then over to tests, and we're looking for a two sample confidence interval, so a two sample z interval. So as I'm arrowing down, there's my two sample z interval. The next one's the t interval, we don't want that one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and then it's asking me to enter my data in. Uh, whoops, let me make this small again, I just want to move this out of the way so I can get to my data. Um, so as I enter down here, I'm looking first for the standard deviation for my first group, that's going to be the boys. We were given the variance. I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, square root of 98. 
and then enter. The standard deviation for the second sample is going to be the square root of 120. X bar 1, so the mean height for the boys is 125. The mean height, oh, we're on the sample size for the boys, which is 52. The mean height for the girls is 127.6, so they're taller at this age, and their sample size is 50. And a confidence level, I do want 0.99, so that's perfect. So I've got everything in here. The calculator, you'll see, um, went ahead and just did those square roots for me. Um, I can go ahead and hit enter. So it's giving me this confidence interval. And that confidence interval is, let me put it right here, um, negative, negative 7.9 less than mu um, boys minus mu girls is less than 2.7. Let me hide this. This is my 99% confidence interval. So of all the difference that all the differences that we're expecting, we're expecting the differences to be between negative 7.9 centimeters and between 2.7 centimeters. One of the differences happens to be the difference of zero because zero lives inside of this interval, so I can write this in, negative 7.9 and positive 2.7, um, because zero um, lives in this interval um, is such that negative 7.9 is less than zero is less than 2.7, that means that we're going to um, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Since we're failing to reject the null hypothesis, that means we're like keeping it. We're favoring that null hypothesis. The null hypothesis was the claim, perfect, because it was the claim um, and we support the claim. Yes, they are the same. So as we're summarizing this, um, we're really testing for that difference. We were doing boys minus girls. We were hypothesizing about it being zero. So for whatever your confidence interval is, if zero lives in your confidence interval, that means that we fail to reject. because the null hypothesis is always talking about a difference of zero. If zero does not live in the interval, I'll just put some not symbols there. If it does not live in that interval, then that means that we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. I wanna do just um, a slight variation of what we've got right here. I'm just gonna do a redo, a do over here for 16 year old boys and girls. So um, we've got the boys, we've got the girls. We're gonna leave all of the information the same. We're only gonna take um, the averages for the boys and the girls. So the mean height for the boys, and I did look these up, for the boys at age 16 is 173.4 centimeters. For the girls, it's 162.5 centimeters. And we're gonna go ahead and um, just make some assumptions here. We're gonna do um, the same sample sizes and the same standard deviations. Um, same. And we wanna see, um, are the heights the same? So that means that that claim is the null hypothesis, boy minus girl, is it about equal to zero? So the question is, does zero live in our confidence interval? Let's go ahead and construct the confidence interval. So remember, let me just put the summary up here again. If it lives in the confidence interval, that means that we fail to reject or we keep the null. If zero is not in there, we reject. 
So we just really need the calculator to run these numbers for us. I'm going to leave everything in my calculator, but I'm going to change those mean heights since we're talking about 16-year-olds now. So if I grab my calculator, uh, let's go back to stat, back to that two sample interval. I'm just going to arrow down until I get there. There's my two sample Z interval. Um, I'm going to leave the standard deviations, but I'm going to change the mean height of the boys to be, oops, so we're change that mean height of the boys, there it is, to be 173.4. Uh, leaving the sample sizes, changing the mean height of the girls for that 16-year-old data, um, 162.5. I'm going to leave everything else, still doing a 99% confidence interval, and I'll go ahead and hit calculate. This time, we get a confidence interval, so our 99% confidence interval is 5.56, we'll call that 5.6, is less than the difference, mu sub boys minus mu sub girls, is less than 16.23. So at 99% confidence, we're expecting the difference to be between 5.6 centimeters and 16.23 centimeters, not zero. Zero does not live in here, so zero not in here. So with 99% confidence, that difference is going to be bigger than 5.6. So because zero is not in there, that means we're here. We're going to reject that null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said that the means were equal. And for this case, that was our claim. So if we were asked a question about the claim, we would say using the confidence interval, so I can say that the confidence interval shows that we do not support the claim. The reason that I wrote it in terms of rejecting and failing to reject is because your claim could be either the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. So as long as you are keeping your eye on if zero is in the interval or not, knowing to fail or reject the null hypothesis, then um, you'll be able to follow that up with your claim.